welcome everyone to today's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse and as always I'm your host here on the channel. Usually I upload videos once a week that is covering various Norse heathenry related topics, uh, topics of discussion, things that may strike my interest uh, to talk about at any given point in time. And then like today we have a series, uh, several different series actually. Today's uh, series is part of the Deity Discussion installment. Um, we're going to be doing episode 8 today and uh, we're talking about Freyr or Frey, either one, same thing, uh, depending on how you call them or whatever. Um, check out all the other videos on the channel as well. There's other playlists. There's a Broggy's Corner sort of storytelling uh, series that I have. And uh, there's a Hobomol discussion, all kinds of cool stuff. Really appreciate if everybody would uh, take a minute to, you know, check out the channel. If you like what you see, give those videos a thumbs up. Give me a comment in the comment section. And then if you don't want to miss anything, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications so that way you're always notified whenever I upload new content. Uh, so before we do get started, I don't want to forget about it like I did last week, uh, let's go ahead and get our candle lit and incense lit, and then we will go ahead and get into the discussion about Freyr today. Alright. There we go. Easy peasy. Alright guys, so... There goes the incense. Hold on a minute. Let me redo that. There we go. All right. So Freyr, right? Um, he is a Vanir god. You got the two tribes of the gods, the Aesir and the Vanir. And uh, the Aesir gods are typically associated with the warrior class, whereas the Vanir, like Freyr, is, is the kind of fertility, agricultural... Uh, class of gods, if you will. Um, and he is Vanir, um, but he's also kind of an honorary member, if you will, um, of the Aesir tribe. Um, because after the Aesir and Vanir war, um, Freya and, and Freya, uh, they were given up as hostages, and so they lived with the Aesir in, uh, in Osgard. Um, but Freya has his own hall called Elfheim, um, and that's where he kind of presides. He, um, his name in itself in Old Norse is uh, literally meaning uh, Lord, okay? It's more of like a title, as it, is, as it were, um, more than an actual name, kind of the way Freya, uh, her name is a bit of a title as well, means uh, um, beloved or lady, I believe it is. Um, so it's kind of a title more or less over, the, over than such a, as a name. Uh, we're going to be getting into his name or perhaps a name that he's also known by um, from Proto-Germanic. Um, heathenry even before like the Viking Age and before Old Norse um, tribes and stuff came around um, where the Old Norse tribes, Scandinavian tribes sort of originated from. Um, but again, as a Vanir god, he is uh, most closely associated with uh, things like you know, fertility, both uh, sexual and um, agricultural, you know, the fertility of the land, fertility of the body, um, prosperity, peace, stuff like that, um, and he was, if I remember correctly, he was uh, a deity that was widely venerated by the uh, Swedes, um, and it is said, at least, that he is the uh, descendant or, or the father of what became the Engling line, um, that he fathered the, they, they know that the Englings are descendants of um, Freyr. Um, so... He's probably one of the most widely and passionately venerated deities or gods, divinities, whatever you want to call them, uh, amongst the heathen Norse and other uh, Germanic peoples as well. Um, I believe it's in the poem Lokasena in the Poetic Edda. He is called the foremost of the gods and hated by none. Um, and again, that, that's probably reason. Reason for that is, is most likely due to him being... Um, you know, things like prosperity, uh, fertility of the land, make sure that your crops are growing well, um, all that sort of stuff, depended on his uh, benevolence. You know, so the people of the land that were mostly farmers and, and had a lot to do with agriculture, they grew everything, they, you know what I'm saying? So that his, making sure he was happy was, was the most important thing for a lot of the people, right? Um, his imagery and his and things that are associated with him 
um, are particularly manifested in uh, um, certain things. Like he has a boar um, called Gulenborsti, which means golden bristle. Um, you know, and he's also uh, oftentimes seen in a lot of the idols, a lot of the god poles that you see coming out of there that represent Freyr. Is um, he has a very large phallic penis, right? So he's 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 very well endowed uh, to kind of be a representation of his uh, fertility and of his of his. That's 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 something that's associated with Freyr a lot. Um, so it's not it's not the Norse being crass or anything like that. Like that's just literally a representation of his fertility. Um, uh, what else? So um, like I so, said, so the the name Freyr, like we were talking about earlier, uh, as it being more or less a title rather than a name. Um, his original Proto-Germanic name seems to have been uh, something like Ing uh, or Ingvas. We see that in the Elder Food Art runes, the actual rune Ingvas or Ingus, um, uh, and it became Ing among the Anglo-Saxons, the, the, the name Ingvas became Ing among the Anglo-Saxon heathens, and I believe it was Ingvi, uh, or Ingvi Freyr, or Ingunar Freyr, among the Scandinavian uh, branches uh, of, of folks, right? Um, another thing that we also know, at least from some medieval Icelandic sources, is that folks who were either priests or priestesses, um, using that term kind of loosely, if they, they maybe not had the same title, but the religious figures um, at the time of Freyr, who specifically were priests or priestesses of Freyr, um, were known to travel throughout the country, and they were uh, quite often on chariots and stuff, and they would carry a statue of Freyr with them. Um, the significance of such um, there, of such the processions is, is described by uh, Tacitus, a Roman historian, uh, and he vividly depicts the processions connected with um, early Germanic, uh, an early Germanic goddess, Nerthus, um, whose name I guess we can uh, say is derived, uh, or, the, or it was actually a proto-Germanic form of the Norse god Njord, who is actually Freyr's father. Um, and anyway, so when these priests or priestesses, whoever came and uh, arrived in towns um, with the uh, god Paul Freyr um, with them, um, when they would arrive to these villages or towns, uh, people would lay down their arms, um, every iron object, anything that would be considered out of war, um, and they would enjoy a period of time that was, you know, considered of, of peace and, and you know, joyous festivities. Um, they would, you know, revel in, in Freyr's presence. Um, which is oftentimes seen as a very kind and pr prosperous presence, right? It's what he's associated with. Um, they, the, you know, so, and these uh, processions were, uh, or celebrations, if you will, they, they appear to have been common uh, features of the worship of the deities that the Norse called the Vanir, because the Vanir, again, where Freyr is from, have to do with anything uh, associating with you know, prosperous uh, crops, things that, you know, when you're growing, you want things to grow well, um, prosperity of the home, wealth, um, good fortune, peace, anything like that. Um, and we see that these practices and these venerations go back from as early as, I believe, like the first century all the way up to and through, um, you know, the Viking Age. You know, so a lot of times when we, when we talk about uh, these deities uh, during these videos. It's, you know, covering a bit of the history, things that we know about the deity, um, depending on which one it is, we have a lot or not so much. And then we also, I also like to go into, you know, some specific, um, maybe a little bit of UPG type stuff, things that I feel are associated uh, with the gods, if I've experienced their presence specifically. Like, so today we're talking about Freyr and, um, you know, I've had Freyr, I've, I've bloated to Freyr, or I've done bloat to Freyr. Um, I will actually be planning to do a bloat to Freyr soon because I'm going to be planting crops um, for a garden and I want to have Freyr's blessing on the land to uh, make sure that everything grows well so there will definitely be bloat done to him. Um, and I associate any time that you're looking to um, increase your wealth, increase your prosperity, bring prosperity bring fertility to your home or to your land or to your... And fertility can mean a lot of things to me. It's not just, you know, the, 
the fertility of your body or the fertility of the land, but just the overall wellness and success and prosperity of your home, your life, um, anything like that, you know. Um, so I like to work with her because, you know, we, we, we look at so much of what, you know, Norse heathenry kind of surrounds and, there, and, we, and, I, and a lot of people tend to focus more on the, the macho, brave, you know, uh, warrior class types um, because they seem to get the most attention, they garner the most attention, um, and we sometimes uh, tend to f maybe put the other gods on the back burner, we don't think about them as much because of they're not warrior class types. You know, Vanir do the Vanir gods, um, I think it's sometimes not shoved to the side, but may maybe it's in some sort of way forgotten about, um, or not thought of as much, and I, and, I, and I feel like it's so very important to honor and venerate the gods all of them. Um, some we're obviously going to focus on a bit more just for whatever specific reasons, whatever our hearth culture is, whatever maybe your tribal culture is, um, your individual cultic practices, that sort of thing. Um, but so for Freyr, I feel like this time of year especially, um, when newness of the earth is coming, you know, winter is waning, spring is coming, and we are getting into the planting of crops, the newness of things, um, I feel like it's a wonderful time of year to think about the value that Freyr has for us in all of our individual practices and our tribal traditions, um, and to not forget him, but to remember him and to venerate him where, where and as is appropriate. Um, so this is, guys, this is my take on Freyr. We talked a lot about his history, a lot of the sort of historical things that we know about him. I talked a little bit about the way I feel. And now I'm anxious to hear what you have to say and what you think about Freyr. So please, in the comments below, tell me what you think. Um, tell me what your workings have been like uh, with Freyr, if they have been at all. And uh, give me your insight. I'm always anxious to hear what you all have to say. So um, tune in next week. Um, next week is going to be kind of a special thing. I usually only do one video on Sundays. Um, but we're actually going to be doing two videos on Sundays. One video is going to be released early in the day probably somewhere around noon p.m. Central, we're going to be premiering a special collaboration video that I did with Eric Shervin, Eric Wordweaver Shervin over at the Raven's Call, um, and he is the Gothi of the Hridgar folk in Texas, and um, love his channel, so please, um, at the end of the video, you'll see a link to his channel. Um, please head over there and check out Eric's channel, because next Sunday at 12 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time, noon, right, um, there's going to be a video premiering that features him and I together, sort of, kind of. Um, we're going to be talking about Ostara. Um, so there's that, and then there's going to be the regular, um, you know, discussion that we have next week, which is going to be a, another special one. It's going to be kind of a, me, myself and a, a fellow heathen who I've become friends with, we're going to be kind of talking. Um, so there's going to be two of us on camera. So it's going to be a special, special episode next week. So um, please, if you haven't already, become a subscriber to the channel. You'll see all that pop up in the end screen. Check out all the related content that you see appear there. Subscribe to Eric's channel because you don't want to miss what we have coming up for you uh, next, next week and in the future. I'm sure there will be a lot more stuff from us uh, together going on in the future. We've talked about it and we want to do that. Um, so everybody that's sticking, uh, watching live on Facebook, please don't go anywhere so that way I can uh, continue the discussion with you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching episode 8 of the Deity Discussion Series. Hail, and I will see you all in the next video.